are the waters that lead to the Great Mississippi River. Flowing from Lake Itasca in Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico, it's the gateway to the western United States. There could be no better place than the Mississippi to pay tribute to those first heroes of the American West, Captains Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. It is therefore fitting that acclaimed sculptor Harry Weber placed his magnificent cast bronze sculpture of Lewis and Clark right in the mighty waters of the river itself. It's called The Captain's Return. From the banks of the Mississippi in St. Louis, Missouri, Harry Weber. Uh, what you see behind me is a 22 foot bronze statue of Lewis and Clark titled The Captain's Return to commemorate the 200th anniversary of their return to St. Louis after their trek out west. Uh, it was about two years in the making and one year in negotiating this site. The statue sits almost exactly on the site where Lewis and Clark actually returned. Uh, unfortunately for the statue, it's a site that's subject to the rise and fall of the Mississippi River. And since its installation in September of 2006, it has been totally underwater uh, at least twice and partially submerged more than a half a dozen times. The basic patina that was applied, which was a cold patina, uh, and a patina is nothing more than an acid wash that combines with the surface of the metal bronze and gives it the color. And then the use of permalac on the outside um, has maintained it extraordinarily well with it, nothing more than water to wash it. Like the rugged explorers it celebrates, the sculpture has to withstand everything the river can throw at it. Harsh weather, flooding, abrasion, chemical abuse, and UV assault. Conditions like these call for extraordinary surface protection. That's why Harry Weber chose to coat his sculpture with Permalac, the outdoor clear coat lacquer specified by artists, sign makers, and other outdoor installers from coast to coast. Professionals who hate to be called back for a redo because one of the competitive lacquers prematurely failed. When any sculptor turns over a statue to a client or a governing body, uh, they're basically disassociated with it. And uh, the care and feeding of that statue is a problem sometimes. This lessens the problem considerably. We can turn it over to people and say, just wash it down. As a matter of fact, one of the statues that we've done, also a Lewis and Clark statue, a big 60-foot diorama in the lobby of the Fur Exchange Building, uh, had them climbing out of the water. And unfortunately, the hotel had to use some chemicals to treat the water, which inevitably attacked the bronze and you know, was beginning to turn things blue-green around the legs of the people climbing out of the water. We drained the place, uh, sandblasted the statues and reapply the patina and then use permalac where these, these statues were considerably older uh, and they stand anything they can throw in that bath so now that's uh, they're perfect the hotel's very happy because they don't have to have somebody come in and wax it every two or three weeks and we're very happy because they end up being the color we install them in. I've, I've got a crew uh, who swears by it actually it's a lot easier to use than uh, the standard waxes that we had been using before that and other lacquers which tend to flake and you know discolor themselves. We, I was a little bit hesitant to use it the first time because I didn't like the idea of most lacquers tend to after a year or so discolor, flake, uh, add their own flavor to the thing and uh, we've had absolutely no experience on that score and I think we probably used it now on oh 20 different statues. In the 18th century, the Mississippi River divided a young United States from the largely unexplored French territory of Louisiana. Then, on July 4, 1803, President Thomas Jefferson announced the purchase of Louisiana from Napoleon's France. And just like that, the United States doubled in size. But what had the United States bought? It was a vast wilderness of uncertain potential needed to be understood before it could be put to work. So Jefferson authorized a grant of $2,500 to explore the new territory. Jefferson chose Captain Meriwether Lewis to head the expedition, and Lewis called on Captain William Clark to be his partner in command. 
In May of 1804, the captains led the newly formed Corps of Discovery out of Illinois and into the unknown. It would be two years, four months, and ten days before they returned. In that time, they would draw 140 maps, discover nearly 300 new species, and open relations with 30 previously unknown native tribes. On September 23rd of 1806, the expedition floated down the Mississippi into St. Louis, where its return was celebrated by a crowd of 1,000 people. It's a return that is celebrated to this day with Harry Weber's The Captain's Return and the Permalac Clearcoat Lacquer protecting it. Permalac, where the outdoors meets its match. For more information and technical specifications, or to order online, go to permalac.com.